<coughs> Parsha Tzav is the Parsha we have this week. Uh, continuation of Karbanos. If, if you're interested, the new arts go Chumashim that we have. I have uh, diagrams and illustrations in the back. Color diagrams and illustrations that are in the back of the Chumash. So that's why it's a little bit thicker. You can take a look at those. It's helpful in these Parshios as you understand some, some of the Karbanos. The Parsha opens up with the lesson of Tzav. Tzav, which means the command. It's interesting to note at the end of the Parsha, they tell you what is known as the Masoraetic note. The Masorah in, that, in, that, in the Parsha is basically how many psukim, at every Parsha has a certain number of psukim. So, um, and, and they usually give you some sort of hint to what, the, what that's about. So, uh, for example, in last week's Parsha, a little bit more esoteric, and, and our school will tell you at the end, usually like the last, the last comment of our school, last week's Parsha, there's Kuf Yud Al Psukim in Vayikra. So, Kuf Yud Al, 111 Psukim, numerically corresponds to the mnemonic of De'uel, to know God. This alludes to man striving to know his creator and come closer to him, a goal that is achieved by means of the, of the Karbanos. In this week's Parsha, they have a dispute in it, but in this week's Parsha, the number of Psukim are 96 Psukim, which is the mnemonic of Tzav, the Parsha being Tzav, and also the mnemonic of Tzav. Some say it's 97, but obviously, interesting, it's rare that you actually have the name of a Parsha also have the exact same uh, Psukim in it to correspond to the actual Parsha itself. Um, <coughs> one to note. So it starts off with Tzav. Tzav means to command. It's uh, one of the harshest terms, meaning it's directed. It's not via Marta, it's not via Daber to tell him to do something, but rather Tzav is Aaron is one of Lemur. So command Aaron and his children, saying, Zostar Salah, he ha Ola al Mokdal and Mizbeach Kala Laila. This is the Ola offering, which is, and that's what the, the beginning of Tzav is really all about, is going to be the Ola offering and the ashes that come from the altar, that come from the Mizbeach. So, what's noted here is two important aspects over here. Is is Tukadbo. The fire of this all of this altar is going to is going to burn on this. It's also going to be an Eish Tamid. It's going to be a continual offering that we're going to have on this mizbeach. And continual offering, as the Gemara learns, continual doesn't mean that it burns twenty four seven. Continual offering means that it's something that's that's not the difference of I guess continual versus continuous is that it's going to be a daily offering. Because in the morning, you're going to clear out the ashes. There's not going to be a fire there. So what the Gemara tells us over here is that this, this, this carbon and others, such as the Tamid, H. Tamid, to Kalam Mizbech, this Tamid offering is something that's going to be a daily sacrifice. If there is a concept over here of continuity without continuousness, which means something, a person can do something on a continual basis, and that is the essence of this particular carbon. One of the important messages that we have is to do something continually on an ongoing basis, even with pauses, but as long as you have a proper pattern, then that is where a person actually sees growth. This is the essence of what the Talmud offering is all about. The Gemara says the reason why it's called Tzav is because of the fact that there is a chisar and kiss, there's a loss of money that exists over here. So we're just going to explain one aspect of the loss of money. One aspect of the loss of money is that the Kohanim are working in the base of Migdash, and they're not able to take upon themselves other jobs. It's uh, what we would call today in the modern day jury duty, but there's holiness associated to the Korban. And here in our case, there's no holiness associated with it. But in the case of the Korbanos, when the Kohanim were chosen to be able to work there, they therefore did not have opportunities to make money. So the way they made money was, in many cases, the meat that they received. They would get the benefit of the meat. In this case here, the Ola offering doesn't actually have benefit of meat. They don't get that. The only thing they do get is the hides, which is considered far inferior. And so therefore, a Kohen, and this is the case for us in our mitzvah. So if we don't see the benefit of what we're getting, we're like, I don't really want to do it. I'm not interested in the mitzvah. So Hashem says, Tzav is b'nei Aaron. You must command them. They have to do it with alacrity. Because even though they're not going to feel their own benefit for it, still you have to push them to it. And that is a message for us in our own mitzvahs. Many times, why should I do this mitzvah? I don't really feel or see the benefit of it. And therefore, we need to be a little bit extra pushed when it comes to those mitzvahs that we don't feel the connection to. Because that is what Hashem is telling us over here. Sometimes you're not going to feel it. You go for it and push yourself to be able to get it done. Rabbi Chanan, Amen, Akash, Shemir, Eskash, Baruch Hu.